John Fung, welcome to Property Insights, mate. Thanks, Mark. It is an absolute honor to be here. Is it important to invest alongside someone, uh, like probably in the early days, by the sound of things, you invest alongside your dad, perhaps? Yeah. Or at least with his guidance. Um, and now you're investing with your partner, your wife. Yeah. Um, how important is that? I mean, is that a... Um, obviously, we, we, know we want to invest along with our side of our dad because it's just a nice <laughs> thing to do at the time, or we want to allow, uh, invest alongside our wife because it's a good f- function between the two of you. Um, and to prepare for your, you know, your both of your future retirement. That's right. I understand that. But how important is it in terms of the risk assessment? So, like, is it important? Do you think? I mean, is it, or is it more comfort to ah, you? You know, the most important investment decision you make is is who you marry or who you partner with. Uh, your ability to be on the same page or to disagree and commit to each other is crucial. It all not just to find your financial success, but also your emotional happiness. Uh, I think me and my wife are very lucky that we are on similar pages when it comes to risk aversion as it pertains to to finance investing. That's not true in other parts of life. So conflict resolution is is really important to us. Uh, And so I think in answer to your question, uh, I think it's really important you're investing alongside people who you are on the same page with. And even if you don't agree on how much risk to take, that you agree on how to resolve that question. If you don't have that, it's going to be very challenging. What does that mean then? So let's say someone younger is listening, they're they're thinking about their partner, they're not married, they they don't know enough about each other at this stage to commit. Um, But they both have enough income together for they borrow the money to go and buy a property. Um, And they both really want to get into the property market. Um, In terms of conflict, do you think they should enter into an agreement? (laughs) It's a great hypothetical. I would say the best way to think of that hypothetical is play out the downside case. Downside case could be you both want to get in but you can't agree on the property. Or you both agree on the property and then something goes wrong. Or you buy the property, it goes great, and then one of you wants to sell, one more doesn't. What is your level of confidence that those questions can be resolved in a way that is going to deepen your partnership as opposed to split it up? And I think if you can't be confident, I would, I would, not, I would not enter that stuff yet. Would you, would you, would you say to your, you know, your potential uh, business partner, who might be your partner, and it doesn't even have to be your partner yeah, in, yeah. Life, in a life sense. It could be your mate. Yeah, yeah. Could even be a brother or your sister for that matter. Um, but people change their mind. You know, things change. I mean, they might go and get married or they might totally. go to another country. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you think people should enter into one of these agreements, the what if agreement? So in the event that um, me, John, I can't decide what, uh, I can't agree with what you, Mark, want to do because right. we need to renovate the kitchen or whatever the case may be. All cool, got it. Um, in that event, one partner buys the other one out or that's alternatively right. something along those lines. Do you think that's an important thing to do? Do you think people yeah. should do that? I, I think, and again, I'll, I'll maybe uh, discern between financial marriages and I guess relational marriages. I think a prenup is crucial if you're going to do that. And, yeah. and just for a second, wisdom, I wouldn't do that. Even when I've invested alongside my family, it's been very clear ownership. So we haven't like gone 50-50 on a property or things like that. Uh, I think that would be, because life changes so much, it's so unpredictable, I think that's pretty risky. So I would ideally not do it. If you had to do it or really want to do it, you better play out those scenarios, have a really crisp prenup, because who knows what life will throw at you. Yeah, that's very interesting, because I think Domain actually put out some um, data a little while ago saying that there's a greater proportion of people today who aren't in a a typical relationship, not married necessarily, but they could be mates, who are actually going to the property market because because there's a stretch in terms of servicing yeah, these days. of course. They use their, their double income to actually get into a market which they would otherwise not be able to get into in terms of yeah, the amount of money yeah. they need to borrow and the amount of money they need to save in order to get to you know, a reasonable deposit. And that is a thing now. It's, it's a thing. It's a thing. So yeah. those people probably should have at least, even if it's not a, a deed that's sort of enforceable, a document, a page that says this is what happens totally. if something goes wrong. Because things turn uh, yeah. shit. Like from, you know, things can get pear-shaped pretty quick. Uh, yeah, ex- exactly. I mean, I would do. I would definitely do a deed and then some. Again, I've never been, I guess I've been fortunate or I guess I haven't chosen to be in the situation apart from with my married partner, in which case we're all in with each other anyway. Um, but, you know, life is so long. So many crazy things have happened. Even if you guys got on great, you might get married to people who have different views of opinion uh, to the other, right? And so uh, I would really prepare. I would definitely do that. I'd play out those scenarios and I'd find a way to legally codify it so good boundaries can make good neighbours.